2K Sports in association with the PGA Tour proudly presents the season-long race for the FedEx Cup. Today's coverage of the Players' Championship is about to begin. I'm Luke Elvey, alongside Rich Beam in the booth, and it's a hello to Henny Koyak down on the course, following our featured group. Hi Luke, I'm very happy to be out here. If this event kicks off, our feature group consists of two players that appear to have entered into this fantastic rivalry. Yeah, so this week their goal is to beat John Rahm. Henny, that is by no means an easy feat. Uh, no, I, if John Rahm is fired up, sparks could fly, you want to be out of the way, and he's just going to go straight through like a Spanish bull. <laughs> yes, he, he's fire and brimstone, isn't he, John Rahm? All the Americans couldn't beat him in a Ryder Cup. This player, well, it's an ambitious rivalry to say the least. Wow, he let the big dog eat there, didn't he? Penny, what have they got in front of them here? He's got, oh, I'd say roughly 120 here. This looks to be heading to the green. John Rahm watched that one all the way. Great approach shot. This player is definitely upping the pressure in this rivalry. This one's tracking. Well, that's delightful. A birdie to get the round underway. I've never been disappointed by starting off my round with a birdie, Luke, I can tell you that. He's currently in a share of top spot. The first of our birdie opportunities comes second, par five. Driver not necessarily required here because you have to shape your tee shot from right to left. And if you're a right-handed golfer, that's not the easiest thing to do. So lefties have a better opportunity, I think, of finding this fairway than most with driver. From there, a second shot over a long bunker to a green that's very narrow, dotted by pot bunkers. Truly is one of the coolest par fives on this layout. That's tidy. Going for this green in two, Rich. It's an exciting but daunting task. The green is minuscule from back in the fairway. You know that you have a little bit room over to the left, but you're going to fall off into a low area. And if you miss it out to the right, you're going to find a very deep bunker on the right-hand side of the green. There's really no great miss around here, but if you're going to go for it, you have to know that your short game is going to bail you out no matter where you miss it. Opting for the three wood. Oh, look at this. Right down the throat. That was a top effort, that one. So close to going down. But this player is really going after it here, Rich. I'll tell you what, what a sensational play. This player stepped up their game. A bold play, hopefully a bold reward. Hang on, this looks pretty handy. That wasn't your best effort, was it? You know, 
Luke Donald once made all 400 plus attempts inside three feet on the PGA Tour. Looking for another birdie here. Let's take a look at the par three third. Straight away mid iron to short iron shot. Such a cool little par three. Love this green. There's a low section in the front and a high section in the back. And anytime they put the pin all the way in the back section of the screen, well, I'd tell you what, good luck on you. If you miss this green long and or left, that bunker sits some five feet below the surface of the green. Going with the seven. Yeah, good safe shot this one. That should find the surface. Oh, that's a lovely looking shot into birdie range here at the third. Luke, nothing gets past you. Yes, this kid is a stud. Oh, you've made it. What a play. Let's return to live play now. A birdie putter waits. Go on, get in the hole. It was on a good line. And just a little bit of clean-up work remaining on this hole. He's currently in the second position. Well, the fourth is another great example that it doesn't need to be a long par four to be a testing one. This fourth can be menacing, can't it? Just a small little twisty par four. Just going to take out a fairway wood, find the fairway, and from there you're going to have a small second shot, probably a wedge. Three distinct sections to this green, the front, the right, and the back left, and all of them have their difficulties when hitting your approach shot into them. However, in my mind's eye, if you find the fairway, you should have a decent look for birdie. That should find the cut stuff. Around 110 yards to go. One stroke off the lead. Opting for the 9-iron. Nine -nine. Yeah, that one's looking good. That was special. Already made a few birdies today, and this is another good look. Oh, so close. This putt's about four feet from the hole. He's got this for his part. Ouch, that hurts. Just a short putt remaining here. We'll now move over to John Rahm. He's got some work to do, but he's only one back from his rival. John Rahm getting ready for his next shot. Ooh, that almost went down. And after that effort, this is how the field is shaping up. Our current leader is enjoying a two-stroke lead. All right, Rich, the power four fifth. Oh, strong hole, this one, isn't it? Huge mounding down the left-hand side that you want to avoid at all costs. The bunker down the right-hand side, to be fair, is not that bad. But a little further right of that, though, that's the water. You want no part of it. Second shot is downhill to a green. To be fair, that's mostly flat, runs from back left to front right, but one of the more benign greens on this layout.
That's not what they hoped for. I'm definite about that. Sitting at minus one, tied for second place. Scorecard filled with threes never hurts. Good putt to make this. Ooh. An opportunity to make a par here. Starts off on a good line. And that's a good make in the end. Certainly helped them fight back from a difficult position. In the bunker with their tee shot. Nice save indeed. The tee shot at the par 4 6 has changed a lot now that that tree's been taken out of the way, Rich. But uh, what do you think of this short par 4? I missed the tree. I thought that was a really cool feature of this hole. You had to flight it underneath the tree back in the day to find the fairway. The bunker down the left-hand side has been expanded quite a bit as the lake on the left-hand side has been added as well. The front part of this green is protected by tall palm trees that will certainly make you think on your second shots. This is a wonderful little par four. Time for the second shot here at the sixth. This one is right down the pipe. Yeah, nicely played. And Henny, what are they looking at here? This one's 13 feet from the cup. It's tracking. Always nice to hold those for a birdie. And that will take him to two under. This would be a great up and down from this spot. How close was that to going down? Let's take a look at the leaderboard. Our leader is a couple of shots up at this stage. As we go from a wonderful little par four, we go to a challenging longer par four, the seven. And as you can see, there's a long fairway bunker down the left-hand side that makes you believe there's more room left than you actually have. It's just not there. Players should be looking a little bit further right. If you find the fairway, your second shot should be straightforward. In fact, Luke, I made a two here one time, so that shows you how simple this hole can be. Oh, that was pummeled into submission. Playing this one about 130 yards out. He's two shots back. Well, this one's going right at the flag. Oh, what 
a shot. Mark it down as an eagle. And that'll promote a good move up the standings. What an amazing shot. Let's take another look at that one. Well, Luke, I think he's found his distance. Currently four under for the round. And after that good play, moving up the leaderboard. The eighth hole, a long par three, stretching 240 yards at its maximum. It's no sleeper, that's for sure. I don't find anything sleepy about this hole. The front of the screen is so narrow. There's no place to land it, especially when they put the flag stick there. This hole will grab your attention as it should because it's a long iron to a sliver of an opening. Even when they put the pin on the right-hand side, you want no part of it. The center of the green all day long here. Seems to have chosen the three wood. Needs a little members bounce to the right. Yes, any time you can find the green and have a putt, you'll take it. Now this is an extremely long putt. You might even have to hinge on this one. Little birdie look in here. OK, time to return to the action. And this putt will take them to five under. One wheat bix too many, I think. Oh, these are good for the momentum, these ones, right on eight feet. I like the look of this. That gets the job done. Currently at minus four for the round. The final hole on the opening nine at TPC Sawgrass's stadium course, Rich, is a clever three-shotter. Par five, 583 yards from the back. Most players will play this as a three-shotter. Just find the fairway out to the left. Second shot out to the right. Sets up a very simple third shot to a very narrow green. Miss it right or left. Good luck getting it up and down. Beautiful swing there. Second shot here on the ninth.
Well, this person displays the power game in pure fashion there. Absolutely. Love watching a player be bold and be rewarded for it. And he's down there. you got to read. They're going to need binoculars from back here to even see the hole. That was a gallant attempt. Well, yeah, it's a bit disappointing. This one's for Birdie. Looking good. Let's go to John Rahm. Now, who'd have thought we'd see this? He is behind his rival. Can he do the catching up that's necessary? And after that effort, let's take a look at how it stands. Well, this is where the knees start to knock. The sweat starts to appear on the palms of your hands, Rich. Just a slender lead with nine to play. Yeah, no time to start thinking about that lead, Luke. they got to keep their head down and keep going forward. Cannot think about that lead or people will pass them. Lovely effort, that. Sitting at five under par in their round. Currently leading. Going with the eight iron here. Well, they've certainly got the swing in the groove. Well, the practice is paying off here, Luke. This player is relentless. Be nice to see this one go down. Let's see if they make it. Okay, steady now. Three feet to go here to the hole. Now oh, that's got to be frustrating. Hit such a great approach shot in, but wasn't able to convert. 
There's some birdie holes out on this course, and the 11th is certainly one of those, but uh, there are some troublesome spots if you get out of play. There definitely is trouble, but the thing I love about this hole the most, Luke, is that there's so many different ways to play it. Most players will take driver off the tee, but from there, now it's anybody's ball game. You don't have to go for the green on the second shot. You can lay it up over the left. You can lay it up over to the right. You can lay it up long left. There's so many different ways of attacking this hole. Each individual is going to do it differently. I love the second shot on this hole. That swing's so pure, it reminds me of Adam Scott's. Oh, that's a tad disappointing, finding the branches there. Here we have the second shot into the 11th. Not bad. And here we are with the third shot. He's got a two-stroke buffer. We'll now move over to John Rahm. Yeah, he just made bogey on that last one. Playing their fourth shot. Oh, yeah! A shot of the day. And this is why you've got to keep your foot on the gas at all times. These guys and girls are good. Ooh, good look at a birdie here. Rolling end to end is looking nice. Just didn't drop. Parpak coming up here. Leading by a couple after that hole. Well, the tee shot is all that matters on the short par 4 12th. Most players can reach the green. It's just the decision whether the player goes for it or not. They can, but they better be aware that there's a lot of danger up there. Water left obviously is no good, but even bailing out to the right in those dunes, in the mounds, the little pot bunkers on top of those mounds, well, forget about it. That's not a good space either, especially since the green does run pretty hard from right to left. If you want to take this hole on with driver and expecting to make three, well, you need to realize that a five and a six could be easily made as well. That's a bit out of shape. Oh, Henny, that looks like a putrid lie. Is it bad? Looks like they have a good lie here in the first cut.
Oh, that's great. It just missed the hole. Not afraid to go deep. This putts for six under par. What a great opportunity here for a look at a birdie. Oh, gee, that line was looking good, wasn't it? Our work here is done. Let's head to the next hole. Yeah, this is quality play. Still on top of the leaderboard. Uh, great shot. 20 feet to the cup. I can't believe this. Is this going to go in? He's got a pop out here. Let's see if he can make it. Oh, well hold. Let's move on. Let's go to John Rahm. He's currently trailing his rival. Let's see what happens here. And after that effort, that's how it looks. Our current leader is enjoying a two-stroke lead. There's a few birdie opportunities out of the gate here on the second nine at TPC Sawgrass, but it really starts to toughen up down the stretch, starting here with a difficult par 4 14. Difficult tee shot on this playing some 481 yards from the tip. You find the fairway, and you've got a decent chance of finding the green with your second shot, but if you're out of position anywhere on this hole, your number will go up exponentially. That was just striped. The great Severano Ballesteros inspired an entire generation of European golfers, particularly his own Spanish golfers, and I feel that we might even have the best Spanish golfer of all time in John Ramridge. I absolutely agree with that. I, I believe in the game right now, Luke, that if there's one player that all others are fearful of when they get on top of the leaderboard, I think John Rahm's name would be number one because he seemingly has zero weaknesses. I can't find a single one. I look at his game, and it is so complete, you just get envious of it, don't you? Because it is so good everywhere. Off the tee, iron play, the short game, the mentality, the vision. The imagination, he's got every single tool that you could possibly want in this game. He is by far, I believe, the most complete player in our game today. Yeah, it certainly feels like we're in the John Rahm era right now. Oh, well done. Let's see if we can make this big putt for birdie. Oh, what a great stroke. That putt went a bit long there. This putt of about seven feet to the hole. These are on rails, looking good. Well, that's a momentum maintainer. Well done. We'll now move over to John Rahm. Now, who'd have thought we'd see this? He is behind his rival. Can he do the catching up that's necessary? How close was that to going in the hole? Great shot. And let's see what that shot did to the leaderboard. Our leader is enjoying a three-stroke advantage. The par 4 15th again requires another strong tee shot because there's some trees in the way, Rich. Players do hit through a shoot off this tee shot, which makes it a little bit simpler, I believe, for the players. 
Bunker down the right hand side is no good because you'll have trees blocking you out with your second shot. If you miss it left into the pine straw, now you've got some trees blocking you out there. So finding the fairway is imperative. This green is no fun. You find the center of the green and you might be able to putt every single day, but in all reality, you have to find the correct section in order to give yourself the best look at making a putt. Oh, that is crushed. And Henny, what are you seeing down there? He is right on the 150 yard marker here. Looks like they're going with the pitching wedge. And they get a little ground draw here. Yeah, that was tricky with that wind. Great shot there. Seven feet to the cup. Nice stroke. It was on a good line. And this one is for his par. And with that, now at five under with a few holes to play. With just a small sliver of a lead, this could go any different direction down the stretch. Eight days a week, that rhythm works. To win the Players' Championship, you've got to run the gauntlet, Rich. Here we are with that big testing second shot at 16. The water down the right-hand side is very obvious. What's not obvious are the grass bunkers on the left-hand side. You hit it in those, no guarantee of getting up and down. If you take on the green and find it, then you're almost guaranteed a birdie four. Opting for the five wood. Oh, that's outstanding. Another great shot by our leader. I tell you, you just dream about days like today. Greens and regulation spot on all day. Awesome. This has a real chance. OK, Henny, what's he looking at with this putt? They've just got to focus on hitting the back of the cup, guys. This is up the hill, bit of extra juice needed. Just missed. Terrific shot. Almost an eagle. And they'll tap this in for birdie. Mark it down. That's birdie number five. And that will take him to six under. All right, Rich. You've stood there. You've hit the shot. Take us through the par 317. 
when you play here in a practice round, it looks like you could just throw it on there. But when you're in a tournament round, it doesn't even look like it exists. It, the hole changes so much when the tournament starts. That's what I love about it. You just add 35,000 people who are having some fun and ready to heckle you if you knock it in the water. Eh, good luck. Enjoy. Chosen the pitchy wedge here. Yeah, that's a good line. That should find the surface. That was a beauty. Just take a look at this one, Rich. Do you think it's makeable? Look, I gotta say, I'm really not liking their chances here, but you never know. Stranger things have happened. Get excited. This could go in. Putting for a par now. Let's take a look at the leaderboard now after that hole, and they're currently in first. Lydia Ko holds second. Let's head to the finishing hole. This wonderful par 4 18th. Wonderful only if you're a spectator. It's wonderful if you're not playing it for a lot of cash. It's just one of the most difficult, visually intimidating holes I think you'll ever face in your life. Somehow, try and hit it down the right-hand side of the fairway, keep it out of the rough, and from there, hit it out to the right-hand side of the green somehow, also keeping it out of the rough or that pot bunker short right. Listen, you'd be happy to make five here, that's for sure. Fours are magnificent. Threes are unicorns. They really don't happen that much. It is such a difficult, demanding finishing hole, probably one of the toughest in championship golf. Nicely done. Well, if you find yourself in the fairway, Rich, at the final hole at TPC Sawgrass, you've obviously navigated a very tough shot. But there's just one more to play. There's one final test. The second shot at 18. Water ever so close to the left-hand side. Green has a lot of movement from back to front. Find the right level. Give yourself a decent opportunity to make birdie. But par, never a bad score at the 18th at TPC Sawgrass. That wasn't their best approach, Beamer. Oh, as we can see there, the wind definitely affecting that shot. Ooh, wouldn't it be nice to chip this in and win the tournament? Get this putt to drop, and he'll win the event here. Ooh, right by the hole. Hopefully they won't take that too badly. There's another chance here to close out the victory. And that'll do it, Rich. Players' champion. That's one of the elite wins in their career. Winning the Players' Championship, Luke, is easily as good as winning any major because the field quality is so amazing. This is going to speak volumes for this player and the career going forward. This is a heck of a win. I can't wait to see what they produce next. Well, when it comes to performances that they'll remember, that certainly has to be one.